And we also have received another upgrade here for our battery box. This is the um, XLR port for our charger. So I will put this one into the box somewhere here and cable it internally. And if I need to, I can just plug in the charger to this port and recharge the battery without having to open the lid and connect this with the crocodile clamps again to the smart chant and fuse as I've done before. So this one is much safer and also will put a fuse in between here, like a 5 amp fuse to protect this circuit. Just not sure where to mount it actually, because here it's already pretty full, maybe on this side, but there's the BMS. I uh, can probably go all the way on this side here, have it sitting in the corner. Or maybe it can be even sitting below this board. That might be a better idea, so it's out of the way. So I mount this a little bit, little bit lower here inside this box, just right in the middle. What do you think? Oh, until you answer, it's already done. <laughs> we should do a live stream actually for these things here, so you can advise me straight away. I think it doesn't really matter. That's, a, that's again one of these questions, you know. You can't think about it for a week. You just need to do it. Get the drill, drill a hole and do it. Andy, come on, come on. Ah. Uh, well, the negative side of this port here needs to be connected to the smart shunt output because we need to measure the energy coming from the external charger as well. It needs to go through the, uh, through the smart shunt and BMS to get measured. Otherwise, we would have no idea how full the battery is. We need these ampere hours to be measured. So I probably mount it somewhere over here in this corner and need to extend these cables here as well and make it work with this M10 screw here on the smart shunt. And the other side could be directly connected to the positive or could go to the fuse here. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so this now fits. I need to uh, see this um, this little mechanism here they put in to hold the lid in place. It's like a screw with a spring in it. Uh, I need to file. I need to file out this corner here a little bit to make it square, so um, so it fits in. Ah, damn it! Ah, this is such a bad design. It already fits, but it's not straight. Uh, <laughs> there's always something, always. And it's so hard, I cannot, I cannot use the file really here because we've got the cables inside. There's the positive cable, you can probably see it right away there. So I cannot really file there. I've got only 10 millimeters or so. Man, lucky I've got everything in stock here. Eight millimeter ring terminals and 10 millimeter ring terminals for the negative and positive. And I also found a 7.5 amp vehicle fuse, which I will pop into this fuse holder here. So, this little cap. And there we go, there's our wiring harness. charge port and then the two connections to the terminals. I have to wait until it's dark because I have to turn off the battery for that. I have to take off the positive and negative. And I also would like to make some changes here to the cabling as well because here the conduit is too short and I've got the clamp now for it and here the conduit is too short as well for the cable length. So I will fix this at the same time then this evening. So it is now pretty dark outside. No solar incoming. All right. So we've got our charging harness here ready to go. And I would like to do another upgrade we have discussed recently on the channel as well. And this has to do with the um, pre-charge resistor we are using.
So this is the situation we usually have. We've got the battery down here, positive, negative, and I have my main switch and then the fuse that goes in the inverter, comes back from the inverter, goes into the BMS and back to the negative terminal. There's also the shunt in there, doesn't matter at all. So when we close the switch here, we have an inrush current to charge up these capacitors inside the inverter. So what I usually do is I use the capacitor then and hold it across the switch for just a few seconds. And this pre-charges the capacitors in the inverter and then I can just close the switch and everything is good. So the idea was now to... The idea was... So the idea now simply is to install the resistor uh, and a push button across the terminals of the switch. So here we've got our resistor. Here, 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 here. We just need to make sure it's normal open. So if it's not being pushed, the contacts should be separated. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, and here we have our push button, normal open. So and if we want to turn on our system again, we just need to push the button for two or three seconds and then close the main switch and everything is fine. There will be no spark. Everything is pre-charged. And this is actually such a good idea what you came up with, this push button, the resistor, and both hardwired to the contacts of the main switch. And now we have to turn off the system anyway, and it's a good opportunity to install this push button and the resistor across the terminals of the main switch. So I will put this push button here directly next to the main switch. So there's no doubt you have to push this one first before you turn this one on. So afterwards we have to do a little bit of a manual a procedure, how to turn the whole system on and off. Someone mentioned this actually recently and said, well, that should be in the inside of the door, if you have one. So, and this is our, well, second harness we've built tonight. So these are the two M10 terminals here going to the switch. And then we've got the push button down here and the 18 ohms now. Yeah, 18 ohms, 5 watts. You can you can use anything between, I would say, 15 to 30 ohms and 2 to 5 watts is totally fine. Okay, let's put this one in. So I've now mounted the push button down here with the resistor and the wiring harness. And I'll just... And I use another M10 nut. And they don't need to be super tight here because there's no power going through this connection at all. All right. And there we have it. This was our community idea to put a push button in there with a resistor across the terminals of the switch. So whenever we have turned off the whole system here with the main switch, we have to push this button here for, say, two or three seconds, and then we can turn on the main switch again. So this pre-charges our capacitors then inside the inverter and charge controller. What a good solution. I'm super happy with that. Nice. Oh my god. Look at these two glands here. They are so close together. It's unbelievable. Camera, can we focus right there? Thank you. Look how tight they are together. Just sitting flush next to each other. It just fitted. It just fitted. I had to cut off the back thread here of this one <laughs> gland. Otherwise it wouldn't have fitted with the board here. It is just too tight. Oh well, the next box will be different, definitely. I've learned a lot building this one here, but this is just ridiculous. Everything is in one corner here, and I've got so much space around the whole box, you know? Yeah, it is what it is. Let's put the cables back in, and then we have a look at the result.
Uh, yeah, so I've got uh, everything together. Um, starting from the bottom here with this <laughs> charging port now for our external charger. That looks all very nice. A nightmare to get these nuts on these little tiny M2 screws. This is between the board and the batteries, far behind down there, underneath everything else. And this is where the main cables come in from the positive and negative and everything. There's no room. What a stupid idea again to put this there, you know. I've got so much space in this box. I've, I've couldn't put it anywhere. All right, it's in now. Took me a while. Our push button, I'm not pushing it right now. Because when I test this, I have replaced this screw now with a longer one. So this is holding actually the cover now. I can see it from behind. There's a there's the nut there, but it doesn't quite fit. There is some um, too much tension. You can see the gap down there. Probably get an angle. Yeah, there, there. Just right down there. Yep, yeah, you can see the gap and here from the other side as well. Well, it's on. It's it's mounted. It's protecting the positive terminals here. Okay, the cover here, I cannot get the cover on top of the uh, fuse anymore correctly. It doesn't snap in anymore because of the second cable now here. So definitely not designed for putting a second cable in. And then we've got the BMS here without case still floating around here. It's not mounted, it's just sitting on top of the board here. Gravity holds it down and that's it. I um, well, QUCC has sent out a new BMS now with the other relay. So I'm not doing anything with this stuff here until the new BMS is here and then we replace the whole BMS anyway. So that's why it looks like shit at the moment here. Well, the idea of this whole board was actually if, if everything is mounted, I can just take out this board and hold it up and can, ac can access the battery cells underneath. Well, this is not working anymore now. Everything is... I, need, I would need to take off here the negative and the positive and the cover here as well. Otherwise, the, the board doesn't move anymore. So the, the whole idea went to shit now. This is not working anymore. At least I've got the cable connections. Ooh, a grasshopper just came in. Well, anyways, I've got the cable clans now in here and the cables are correctly connected. This is all fine. So this works all out. Don't worry about this crossing there. There is no crossing because they are crossing there again. From from the outside it doesn't look too bad actually. <laughs> but the inside I don't like anymore. I, I, I should have taken the bigger box really. This was the one where I said well the batteries fit well in there and I can mount everything on top as a second layer here on a little board which I, gen, which I then can take out. But this is all not working anymore. I should have cut out here the whole box or something and mounted the cables directly on the board so they shift up including the board and the switch as well but this is all too late now so well eventually we will build a box 2.0 this was to learn <laughs> so this is all good at least the lid fits okay I would say Let's push the button here, the pre-charge button, and see what the inverter says. Hang on, I'll zoom you in. So we can see the... Just need to dim the light a little bit here. Yeah, make this more Christmassy. Okay, I've got my finger on the button. Hang on, you can see the charge controller in the top left and the inverter. I'm pushing the button right now. Ooh, it works! Pre-charging. Nice! Okay, and then we have to switch the main switch on, and that's it. No spark, no inrush current, nothing. Cool, this works very well. I'm I'm super happy with this solution with the little button here. Oh, the pump kicks in. We are working again, yay! But so far, well, this what a shit show. This, I don't like this box anymore, really. This is all crammed in now and so tight and everything and the whole design and idea went to shit. Not happy with that. Well, anyway guys, we've got it done. The external charge port is in and the 
pre-clo button, the pre <laughs> the pre-charge button is is in. Uh, it works. I haven't tested the charging port, but that should be fine. As long as, as long as we don't open the lid of the battery, everything is good. <laughs> well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. As always, stay charged, stay safe, and be nice. And we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. All right, guys, see you then. Bye-bye. You have a good night. It is quarter past 12. Good morning.